Hi, my name is Jason Leahy, Executive Director of the Illinois Principals Association. Thank you for joining me for this IPA talk. And with me, I'm fortunate to have joining me uh, via Zoom, which we seem to have done several of these IPA talks in this way now, just because that's how it how it works and allows for us to get together. I've got Raya Hageman Davis, uh, who is the Computer Science Teacher Education Coordinator at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign uh, with me to talk about quite a bit that's now going on right now uh, with computer science uh, post a big ed omnibus bill that was passed here uh, at the beginning of this calendar year. It's hard to believe that's, well, I guess in, in spring session, actually, we just a lot of stuff going on. Um, actually, well, remind me, Raya, this one, um, take me back. This one might've actually happened around January timeframe, if I'm correct, right? Well, he signed, Governor Pritzker signed it in March, but it okay. would have been going through the House and the Senate. Yeah. 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 So I think we were, we were wrapping that up uh, January timeframe. I just remember as, as, uh, as we were talking a little bit before we hit the record button that um, there was a big bill and it had a lot of, lot of stuff in it, uh, including what, what's going on with computer science. But before talking about the legislation and the ramifications of that, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here today. Uh, I am in the College of Education at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. I am our, as you said, our computer science teacher education coordinator. And what that means is a few years back, the College of Education um, got a grant to develop a computer science teacher training program. We have a real shortage of computer science teacher training programs in Illinois. Right now, UIUC is only the second um, institution offering a secondary endorsement to teachers with a PEL license. And there are not uh, any institutions that are currently running pre-service um, programs, graduating new teachers who are computer science teachers. We are working on that at UIUC, mm -hmm. but um, you know, when we created our endorsement program, as I said, we were only the second one. Um, Northeastern Illinois University, NEIU, in partnership with ISU, also runs a secondary endorsement. Very so um, we sort of blithely said, let's start training teachers. And then we realized as we got more involved that the landscape of CS education in Illinois was quite complex. We have this major you know, CPS, this huge district that had a graduation mandate, but then in other areas of the state, um, it was much, there was much fewer offerings and uh, we were quite behind in terms of legislation compared to our neighboring Midwestern states, according to code.org and their uh, nine policy rubric that they use to judge the health of CS in um, every state in the country. And so that's how I also became involved in the legislation of HB 2170 in the, the landscape report on computer science education that I think we'll touch on, yeah. um, as well as recruiting for our endorsement and we're looking for funding. So far this year, we've managed to fund 75% of tuition for all of our teachers going through wow. the endorsement. Yeah. And we aim to keep that, if not increase it to 100% coverage mm -hmm. going forward. So how long has the program been running that? You said uh, three or four years, right? Is that correct? No. So it took three years to develop it and get it through okay. ISBE, but we Got launched it. it this last summer. So okay. our first cohort is going through right now. So when are they anticipated to be done? Because I'm sure there are a few uh, building principals that would be kind of licking their chops, ready to know when to start recruiting these people to come work yeah. in their schools. So they'll be done in um, a year from now in December. It's a okay. five semester pathway because we're only running one course a semester because when we were developing the program, what teachers told us is they can't take more than one course when they're teaching full time and have families and, right. and everything. Right. Um, so yeah, four credits a, a semester for five semesters. Excellent. Very and good. And that's to meet the 18 credit requirement by ISB. <laughs> so, so, so if I'm clear then by the way that you describe that, are these all sitting educators that are, that are in the program then? They are. Yeah. And actually a lot of them have already been teaching CS, but um, the state board of education is now really starting to enforce that anybody who teaches computer science has to have an endorsement in it, mm -hmm. which um, for a while they weren't doing because it's really hard. It's really hard to create something new. You have a chicken and egg problem, right? right. So for a while, people were allowed to teach it on sort of special dispensations, but um, mm -hmm. moving forward, they are going to have to have an endorsement to continue to teach CS. And so yeah. um, 
I would say I like 80% that. of our current cohort are computer science teachers. Yeah. I like how you describe it too, talking about it as dispensation. That's uh, is not how I've heard uh, some of that described before, but I think that's very appropriate. So uh, appreciate that. Uh, so let's move on and talk a little bit about um, HB 2170 and, and the various parts related to, uh, to computer science. Uh, as we mentioned, you know, this, was a big, this was a big education omnibus bill that was moved uh, through the chambers back during kind of the, the lame duck session of, of the General Assembly. Um, and so a lot of that wrapped up in January and uh, lots of things at the high school level in particular, we had some high school graduation requirement changes with foreign language and, and uh, a variety of other things that uh, we were looking at. But um, with computer science, there were, were sell up several elements uh, related to, uh, to that, um, you know, in the bill. So just walk us through that, Ryan, and, and explain kind of what we're looking at now moving forward. Yeah. So one of the key things that the bill did was um, create a definition for computer science. Up until that point, Illinois, our state board didn't have a definition. And so um, it was problematic in that some districts, for example, anecdotally, I heard would have keyboarding listed under their computer science because we didn't have any sort of definition. Um, and so, I mean, I have the definition. I don't want to read it. <laughs> it seems oh, boring. That's, okay. but, um, that's all right. Do you want me to? Sure, I absolutely. For, I think for us, that'd be wonderful as we're all trying okay. to level up here. <laughs> that. All right. Well, the definition that was used is that computer science means the study of computers and algorithms, which includes their principles, hardware, software design, and implementation and impact on society, which is really key to get that ethics piece in there. Yeah. Um, but what computer well, and science- And that's pretty critical right now, right? So all yes. the conversations in society. So yeah, go ahead. No, it's just the other key piece that I'm really glad that they did was in the definition, they included what computer science is not. Mm. So it does not include the study of applications, every, everyday uses of computers, such as keyboarding or how you access the internet or right. that kind of thing, networking. Right. Very good. Very so. good. So we've got that. And then now we've also got to move forward with the development of standards related to computer science as well, correct? Yes. So it was mandated in HB 2170 that by December 1st, so we're coming up on that pretty quickly here, right. um, Illinois will have adopted student learning standards, K through 12 standards. Um, and so the state board has already approved all of those. I, last I heard, they were just waiting for it to go through whatever committee it finally has to go mm -hmm. through at mm -hmm. the state level. Okay. Um, and then one of the issues that we've faced in, uh, in here in Illinois, especially around collecting data around CS, is there were a lot of course codes that schools could choose from in the catalog. And it wasn't always um, clear or easy for schools to determine which one of those they should be choosing. And so they kind of just picked one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that made it really hard to do any comparisons across districts if, if schools were using all different kinds of course codes for their computer science. So one of the other things that HB 2170 mandated is that um, the State Board of Education will analyze and revise those course codes and develop um, a curated list of recommended codes so that it'll be easier for us to track moving forward mm -hmm. what's Very being good. taught and where. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what else from the, and I know isby has got some other work that it's responsible for from the bill as well, correct? Right. So the other thing that falls mostly on ISBE is that um, there will be some requirements around reporting CS curriculum on the report card. And I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna look. I know they don't um, report on sort of every class offered, so it's not gonna show up in that sense, but I think schools, because we have standards, schools will have to show that they're meeting the standards if they're teaching computer science. And so that reporting will be included in, in the report card. Um, the last piece, and I want to be really careful with this language because I hear a lot of people saying that the requirement is that every high school will have to teach a computer science course, but the language is fairly nuanced in that all high schools will be required to provide students the opportunity to take a CS course by 2023, 24. And the reason why I make that distinction is because because my understanding is that things like um, dual credit opportunities with local community college would fulfill this requirement, right? So it's not necessarily that every high school in Illinois will have to have an in-house computer science teacher by 2023, because that feels yeah. <laughs> very overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, um, right now, especially when you look at uh, the, the lack of qualified people 
right, right. that are out there and available to do it, which makes this thing really difficult and, and uh, maybe a reason that we're going to see schools looking for more dispensation <laughs> possibly right. down the road. Absolutely. But that, yeah. Abs- so do you have any concrete examples, right, at, at this juncture? I know we're, you know, we're working on implementation, have some time to, to get some of this stuff worked out. But, you know, when you talk about dual credit opportunities or, you know, I know, um, you know, you've got career and technical ed types of different vocational opportunities that schools use in partnership, either they have vocational types of co-ops or consortiums locally within, you know, you have multiple high schools or school districts working together, or maybe they work with a local community college, you know, here in the Springfield area, things going on with our capillary uh, curricular center uh, outside of town and multiple districts have access to that. But uh, do you, have you seen anything in particular, you know, with dual credit or whatever that, that you've seen is working right now that would fulfill this requirement? Yeah. So, um, one good example is here in Champaign-Urbana, we have um, a, actually a wide variety of computer science courses in our high schools here in Champaign, but we are also <clears throat> the largest district in our, you know, sort of micro urban area, right? right? So a lot of our um, outlying towns, so Monticello is the one that comes to mind. They Their students take a bus to Parkland Community College to take computer science at Parkland and then can go back uh, to Monticello, you know, after that course. And so um, that's how that district has been offering CS up until now, because they don't have a dedicated CS teacher at the high school level. Mm-hmm. And that would continue to meet sort of this requirement um, because yeah. the students have the opportunity. Right? Yes. Now, the, 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 the other thing I, I guess I'm curious about, and, and people may be like, well, Jason, that's like the most obvious, almost ridiculous question you would ask here, but I've got to think that um, there are virtual options for computer science courses as well, too, correct? <laughs> Yeah, so actually, I was going to say um, the Illinois Virtual Catalog does have APCSA as an option, which um, obviously does have some prereqs. It's not necessarily open to everybody, but it would be a way for um, some schools to meet this requirement mm-hmm. is through that virtual catalog. I, I don't know in terms of other virtual courses offered by um you know, private providers. I'm not sure if those would yeah. qualify, yeah. but I do know that our virtual catalog that is run by the state does contain a CS mm-hmm. course. Sure. Well, and I would guess if, you know, if, if districts are using like Edgenuity or Edmentum or some of the others that are out there, they would just need to, to get verification that those would, would, would uh, qualify. What about, uh, and not to put you on the spot here, but I'm just curious if you would know what about a program like Project Lead the Way uh, or something like that? So, you know, which is, you know, kind of your, your current technical ed type of, you know, um, uh, engineering type program. So just curious if, if something like that would, would, uh, meet the requirement. Yeah, that's a really wonderful question. Um, I hope so. I yeah. will have to check with <laughs> I, I, put, I told but... you, I put you on the spot there. So okay. <laughs> if you didn't know that, I wasn't like prepping you in advance that, hey, I'm going to no. <laughs> I know. Sure. I hope so. And I imagine at least in the early, you know, in 2023 is a r- right around the corner. So sure. again, we talk about dispensations. I imagine that there will be some flexibility, some effort by the state board to make sure that this is not creating an unfunded hurdle mm-hmm. for districts to have to, you know, especially rural districts that are already facing a massive teacher shortage. I don't right. think there's any expectation that they're going to go out and hire a dedicated computer science teacher. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think that um, the expectation is that a lot of districts will be meeting this requirement through these other ways, mm-hmm. provided that everything meets SOPA. <laughs> yeah, right. Nope. Could you re- could you explain what that means for, for people? Oh, yeah. SOPA. Oh, I'm so bad with acronyms. Uh, it's a, the Student Online Privacy something act. Sorry, yeah, I'm not good with right. acronyms, but it essentially has been put in place to make sure that um, our students' private information is being right. kept private and we are not sharing, you know, these days with cybersecurity, we just have to make sure that we're not signing our students up for things that then <laughs> put their name into all kinds of 
um, distribution lists and stuff. And so now um, pretty much any online program that you want to use, your, your district will have to go through a specific SOPA process of registering with that company to make sure they, they meet the requirements. Yeah, and that's been something they've been actually a little bit used to here during the pandemic uh, with all the virtual learning and things. Uh, things we wouldn't have thought we would be doing, at least to the degree that we are right now. So, um, you know, as I was communicating with you and some of your colleagues uh, as we were leading up to, to this IPA talk today, uh, one of the things that they mentioned is that the, the state board had issued a report or there had been a statewide report issued with regards to computer science that might be of, of interest to school leaders, particularly as they're getting ready to, you know, to implement these new requirements uh, that they've got. So anything, any light that you could shed there? Yeah, so I actually authored <laughs> the report. Um, we got some generous funding from the CME Group Foundation to do um, a baseline analysis of what's going on in Illinois. It was a small team and a small amount of funding. So it's really just a start. Um, <clears throat> but we did a regional analysis of who's offering computer science where and, <clears throat> excuse me, what, <clears throat> I'm sorry, um, what kinds of certifications people had and, you know, what the barriers were to offering computer science. So some of this, some of what we found um, underscores what you would anecdotally expect. Our rural districts are offering much less computer science compared to our urban districts. Primarily only urban districts have um, like a assigned computer science teacher. And <clears throat> for the most part, endorsed teachers are only in urban areas, right? So a lot of our rural teachers um, have done like a code.org training or something like that, but don't have sort of a background or certification in computer science. However, the part that um, we find really useful to know is that the most identified barrier to offering computer science was a lack of trained teachers. Um, and that came from both administrators and teachers themselves. So it was that we don't have teachers and we don't have funding to train teachers, um, even if we had ones that wanted to become computer science teachers. So those were sort of the two main reasons why computer science is not being offered in districts in Illinois. Um, the other interesting thing is that Predominantly right now, Illinois is offering um, introductory level CS courses. About 80% of what our respondents were teaching were intro level CS. Um, there was only about 15% that were non-AP courses. Oh no, I'm sorry. 15% of non-AP and 17% of AP courses also count as core curricula. So almost all the CS courses being taught are intro level and electives, right? Um, which makes it hard to increase the number of students who are taking it <laughs> yeah, right. and really limits options. Once you take an intro level CS course, then where do you go from there? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Well, and, and this kind of brings us back to, you know, the endorsement question here, right? Is, um, you know, and this might be something that we don't even have an answer for at, at this point in time, but, you know, you, you referenced, Basically, two programs that we've got in the state that are that are endorsing, you know, computer science teachers. Um, it, we just, I just have a sense that, you know, for us to make sure the districts can meet the need, um, we've got to provide more opportunities for that um, across the state. So, you know, my question to you is, is, do you know of any conversations that are happening right now? Since you're obviously, you know, very tuned in to, to what's happening here and the conversations around computer science instruction um, that we might be able to build up that pipeline and, and uh, you know, get the, get the people that we need, try to expedite that. So I have heard, um, I guess I don't want to name them because I'm not sure where they're at in their progress, yeah. but I do know that there are some other institutions that are working on creating secondary endorsement programs. Um, ours is 100% online, and we launched it that way um, so that we can reach as far across the state as possible. One of the main hurdles is that teachers can't oh, yeah. travel very far, yeah. right, for their courses. Absolutely. Um, and so hopefully other institutions, I mean, obviously, 
there are downsides to teaching online and there are a lot of things that would work better in person. But if we really are talking about increasing access across the state, I think we will need to have more online options for these kinds of um, secondary endorsements. What kind of capacity do you have for cohorts? I mean, are you maxed out now? No, we're not maxed out. As I said, we have 24 teachers right now in our first cohort. Mm -hmm. Um, We can accept probably another 10 to 15, um, you know. Okay, okay. That's good to know. So let me ask you this, right, as we, we kind of come to a, to a close here, you know, where, where can individuals go either to, to maybe contact you if they've got questions, uh, where can they find more information? And we'll be sure any, any websites or whatever that you mentioned, we'll get those into the, uh, into the show notes here for people so that they have those readily available to them uh, in the description of our YouTube channel. Sure. So our endorsement is uh, at cs.education.illinois.edu. And at that same uh, URL, you can also find a link to the landscape report that I mentioned. Um, We are also, we've partnered with Discovery Partners Institute in terms of getting the word out and recruiting for this endorsement. So I think DPI also has some information on their website if people find themselves coming across their site <laughs> instead sure. of ours. <laughs> you bet. Absolutely. Well, any anything else just top of mind here that you think people need to know with regards to computer science and, and where we're going as a state right now with this? So I think that um, Illinois has a ways to go to catch up, but I also think that we are well suited to do so. We have one of the best computer science um, departments in the world here at UIUC. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, there's only good things coming. (laughs) So, you know, I, again, I think we have a little bit of a chicken and an egg problem. So I would really love to see a growth of things like the Microsoft Teals partner program or ways to integrate CS into existing subjects. I, I think those conversations are really important to have right alongside the endorsement of standalone CS teachers so that we can really make sure that all of our students are, are getting access to um, what is quickly becoming an absolutely required core course, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oxford put out a study that said that by the time last year's kindergartners graduate from high school, 70% of jobs are going to be automated. So really our students, all of our students, not just the ones going into computer science are going to have to understand this new world and, and how to, you know, work with a computer and what's happening on the backside of our programs. So um, I think it's an, it's a multifaceted, a nuanced discussion. And so anybody that wants to partner or learn more, I would definitely love for them to reach out. My email is just raya at illinois.edu. Pretty easy. Great. <laughs> Appreciate that. Well, thank you, Raya Hageman Davis, who uh, is the computer science uh, teacher education coordinator at UIUC. Thanks so much for being with me and talking about this important topic. Appreciate it. Yes, that. thank you so much. It was really yeah. great to talk with you. Yeah, pleasure. Again, my name is Jason Leahy, executive director at IPA. If there's anything we can do for you, don't uh, hesitate to give us a call here at any time, or you can check us out on the web at www.ilprinciples.org. Take care.